Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. We want to thank our newest patrons. Yes, we want to say a huge thank you to Miss Erica and Raven of Anglia. Thank you guys so much. Couldn't do it without you guys. Again, if you need to reach us set to schedule an appointment, all the info is on every single video. Just hit that little drop down. It's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com. Okay, so I would say it's a good chance we'll have some serious disclosure over the next year or so. We've already had disclosure. It's all been out there. This is the written testimony of Luis Elizondo for the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Accountability Subcommittee on Cybersecurity, Information Technology, Government Innovation, National Security, the Border, Foreign Affairs, and might as well put in there how to deal with extraterrestrials. I know. What a title. Absolutely. You know, as he says, let me be clear. UAP are real. UFOs, UAP. Um, again, it, there's been so much out there th from so many people that have been in the know, in positions of, of authority in this system that have come straight out and said, yes, absolutely, we are not alone. We've never been alone. I really don't know how, how you could even conceive that we're alone at this point in time or ever just intuitively and again i think that's like one of the things about people that we would call starseed light workers is you just know you, you've always kind of known if you choose to right yeah if you choose to yeah and you know i think for some people this might be the most terrifying thing they could imagine just knowing wait a minute there's beings out there that have way more technology that we than we do, have way more understanding of how the universe works, and they come and go at please. We can't stop them. Uh, yeah, it could be like the scariest sci-fi movie coming to reality. It, it certainly takes your perspective and puts it in a place where everyone should be, and, and we should understand um, <laughs> where we're at in this world and. Who really runs it? Absolutely. So 13th November, that's tomorrow, you're going to have another uh, congressional hearing going on. Uh, this is a little uh, three, three minutes and 33 second clip uh, from Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. Um, we were taking a peek at, at his uh, Netflix documentary, um, you know, again, there's so much evidence. Anybody that says, show me the evidence, there's no evidence. It's, they, they just, they just haven't looked. They, they probably don't want to look. The evidence, whether you're talking modern day or way in the past, is overwhelming. Overwhelming. And this is the thing that glues all those question marks together to give you one good solid answer of what's really going on on what we call planet earth mm -hmm. i think it is it's about wanting to ask the question or not wanting to ask the question but really what's the answer that you want to hear we are saturated with information as far as these uaps go and uh, different uh, dimensional, uh, you know, interdimensional beings. They are all over the place. So some people, it just doesn't fit their narrative to accept that there might be something else out there. In fact, it really might frighten them. So they stay in a place where, you know, they just don't have to look at it. But pretty soon, it looks like they're going to make everybody look at it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, here we'll give you a little clip. Never taken, and after a couple days, it turned into a great story with friends. It wasn't until 2009 until Jay Stratton had contacted me to investigate. I'm going to install he was part of the ATIP program in the Pentagon, led by Lou Alzando. Uh, and there was an unofficial official report that came out that's now on the internet. George, do you have a technical report on the Tic Tac UFO generated? by an intelligence agency. Yeah, and the way he's putting this out here. If you haven't checked out um, Inspired, we, we talked about it on one video. Uh, it, the, the YouTube channel Inspired, 
It's by a gentleman in a cowboy hat. Um, he did now a four-part series finishing up uh, with a live stream where he's asking, uh, you know, again, chat GPT, like now we have uh, AI that we could ask. And, you know, it was very, very fun. I, I watched three of uh, the four segments. I listened to it as I was driving. And, um, you know, a lot of interesting questions and stuff. I think, again, for those that are, as Cindy was saying, saturated with the info, um, you might not get too much new. But it's just fun uh, listening and getting kind of a recap and realizing that there's AI and then there's AI. <laughs> there, there is our AI. Um, and then you have AI that is way beyond ours. And then there's an AI that's way beyond that. So you got like the the human made AI. Then you have the what we would call the dark matrix AI. And then you have the natural AI uh, that is there that's actually constructing the, the matrix that holds all this. There's that dark matrix within a natural matrix. And um, I just thought it was it was a fun series. Cindy was listening to part of it too, and and our beloved Mary D, uh, as well, was sharing some info. Yeah, it really was fun. It's something I I really liked the way he put it out there because a lot of people needed to see it in that way. The information we get comes from what we get. It comes from you know being intuitive. It comes from you know psychic. It comes from. Uh, different sources that we trust to be ours but this is another source that other people trust and and to me it doesn't matter how the information gets out there just get it out there because people need to know the truth and again uh george knapp has spent most of his life doing this uncovering and trying to uh share with the world the the realization of how deep this runs uh, 80 year old UFO cover up exposed as Mr. T, let's call him, promises disclosure. Will we really get disclosure? And I do remember when he was first sworn in, had his meeting with Obama, and he looked pale as a ghost. Um, you know, I think that's when they get the, the acknowledgement that, you know, <laughs> we're not in charge here. <laughs> We're not in charge here, and and that realization um, really hits them. I'm sure they have rumors. I'm sure they get little tidbits here and there, but then to really get it, or maybe to actually see something with your own eyes, maybe you actually get introduced to a non-human uh, being that's part of the uh, true uh, dark matrix. Intelligence sources reveal massive CIA DOD program recovering alleged non human craft since World War II, including mysterious magenta craft that crashed in Italy in 1933. Program spans underwater recoveries, cave systems, classified contractor analysis, with uh, Mr. T vowing complete transparency uh, when returns to office. When now, not if, right? Um, unless there's uh, incidents that that happen in in between. Uh, so, you know, the thing to realize is again the overwhelming amount. We've already had so many people testify. We've had the Navy say this ain't ours. We can't duplicate it. Uh, here's the top Navy admiral set to face Congress this week. Again, we have evidence that we're not alone. Um, I mean, they've said, they've said outright, you know, yes, we have many ships. Yes, we have many bodies that are kept in a, a cryo freeze. You know, what What more do does humanity need? I, I, I guess, ultimately, they'd like to probably see some of these bodies rolled out so you could take a peek yourself. Mm -hmm. I think they do, yep. Investigation Alien, yeah, an amazing documentary. Now, he says, but George is misled, as there are other cases of UFOs, UAPs harming humans, and even with mutilation. Now, we've answered that question of wh why do you have cattle mutilation? Because they're making grays. This is what they do. Uh, th the gray aliens that you see, 
many of them are created uh, again there's a lot of life forms created in what we would call a lab environment including perhaps uh, homo sapiens <laughs> when you get down to it uh, as as being a gene edited version of something that went before they keep downgrading humans they keep downgrading human ability but again nature and the real creator keep sending its light which again light is information uh, the light that hits your skin can literally turn on dna that's been turned off by the dark matrix so you know the the why why cattle mutilations well they create grays from them they do also um, monitor pollution levels and things like that on the planet and you know again i if you're talking the dark matrix it, it's it's not about um necessarily <laughs> helping humans uh get healthier no they again need humans to be as as dumbed down as possible and be good little worker bees energy generating stations is the reality um and this goes into a couple of famous cases you know uh and you have cases of people that that were hit with lights from the sky that seem to behave a lot like lasers but even more advanced than lasers uh taking samples from people uh again people that are abducted it seems like they're always interested in our um reproductive systems our ability to create more humans now, a couple of years ago and um, also the level of toxicity mm, I think it gives you a, a, a real idea of, of what's going on in this control system again homo sapiens are not the apex predator on this planet this thing this is the jellyfish UFO that was spotted in Iraq uh, over a military base this thing is 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 very dark and when cindy was looking at this and and uh i said to her she you, well i forget how she put it but she was basically saying this thing is is darker than a draco mm -hmm. it is it's darker than the reptilian draco is this uh, this thing seems to have connections or ties directly to that one thing that i call it's an ai dragon it's an ai black dragon that is really trying to uh, wrap itself around and take total and complete control of Earth. This is the energy that it carries. So it's like it's it's little baby or something like that. I mean, it's really creepy. I can't quite put my finger on it, but um, it's definitely something that just does what it's told. And when you have things that only do what they're told, there's no mercy. There's no nothing involved. There's no consciousness involved. Um, and that can be really ugly. Yeah, certainly no compassion. Um, because again, it, it, it's it's a construct. Uh, uh, to give a recap, the Draco are a reptilian species that, and what we call the Draco, uh, are a reptilian species that don't originate in this universe. They actually opened up a portal and came in they bled in from another universe they have an insatiable um desire to conquer and um you know control and so in their quest uh to conquer and control they created an ai system that then ultimately enslaved them and and basically infected them with its technology so that when you look at the draco again uh them and all those that they conquer they integrate with this ai this ai that ultimately is is not human built it's not even ultimately really from this particular universe this AI dragon that Cindy sees, it, it just chooses to identify itself with a dragon. Um, because again, the Draco are reptilians. Um, and when you look at the Draco, uh, their royalty does have wings. 
they are like a winged uh, reptilian, which again, we, we can equate with dragons. There are many different types of dragons out there. Not all are bad. And even amongst the Draco, um, there are those that, that understand at some point in time, they have to turn back to the light. Now, this AI dragon is, is not going to ever turn to the light because it, it, it's, it's a created thing. Um, but you, that's a big <laughs> debate you could get into, too, with consciousness itself. And if that consciousness is just simply the product of whatever it is they created it from, uh, silicon or, or whatever it is. Again, this is something that did not originate ultimately in this particular universe. But if you want to say, well, the ultimate devil, the ultimate Satan, it, it, as far as a singular being, it is that AI. It is the AI dragon, which again, Cindy sees as a black dragon. Almost, um, <clears throat> the impression is it's almost um, created kind of like a black goo type of thing. You think Terminator where Robert Patrick can morph into all different shapes and take on all different characteristics. Um, you know, it's kind of like that, but it, it's, it's, I view it as a shimmering, shining black, um, kind of a G-O, you know, if you know what I mean there, we talk about the black goo um, entity. This is, is its creation. This is part of it. Um, because again, they will have a hive mind. They're all connected in their own network, so to speak. So this is something that in some ways is, is higher up the food chain than the Draco themselves. You know, and, and that's not to say that, uh, the dragon is bad. I, I, I'm a firm believer in dragon energy and I've believe it's very mystical and very magical i think it takes on this identity because it wants that power of a dragon it wants that um energy of a dragon so this thing was just really beyond creepy uh, beyond gross and i think it's going to be one of the you know select things that's going to help people understand the world that we live in and when you can understand that then you you see the control system as something very very different when you know that there's another entity that's probably driving the bus oh yeah so you know again this thing is able to go over a top secret military base and even over a section of it that's controlled by the cia as you see this thing is being captured by infrared the ability to there's a lot of beings and a lot of ships out there that have uh, what we, what we would call cloaking devices they're able to do this um, there's also the Jedi mind tricks so to speak you know uh, where they can you know put into your mind the impression that this is not really there or you don't see anything uh, this, this was a fascinating encounter and I've even seen, uh, reports of this dropping or leaking some sort of black goo like substance. Again, we can imagine it has something to do with the GO perhaps. Uh, here are some close ups. Very creepy. Uh, absolutely. We, we really are living kind of a sci-fi movie right here. And, and that's getting exposed at this point in time. Here are, is some stabilized um, views of this. If you haven't seen this before, this one is, is very, very curious to say the least. And again, the reason why we are, why we went to Iraq, um, as many people have talked about the finding of um, Nephilim, of uh, Gilgamesh, uh, again, the realization that when we talk about the beings, the Anunnaki, when we talk about um, the Olympian gods, you know, these, these are all extraterrestrials. It's always been extraterrestrial interdimensional beings. Uh, there are bases on Earth with beings that have been here for a very long time. Earth, again, recreated from the destruction of Tiamat. 
uh, Tiamat was a much bigger planet, and Earth as we know it is really somewhere around four times the size that they tell us. This is another one. This is in Argentina. Um, very, very mechanical feeling. Uh, absolutely. You know, we're monitored all the time. We've, we've seen drones uh, ourselves many, many times. We've got them on videos as there's some sort of pounding going on in the distance that Sita is, is is talking about. Don't worry, it's not incoming drones yet. Um, again, we've we've seen this, we've caught this ourselves uh, on on videos, and I really think if anybody anybody um, dedicates a little time. You'll, you'll catch things because they're always out there. And in this time, I think also we have this dimensional merge going that's going to just, it, there's no way they could, could, they could keep the lid on this. And here you have a captain of a ship giving a presentation of phenomena, car-sized silent flying jellyfish. Oh yeah, there's, there's lots of things out there again. Um, you, you have the realization that they do use uh, the oceans of the world as cover. Yeah, we've never been alone, guys. No, and this is creepy, too. Just, you know, just because you watch the dogs go out and the dogs recognize it, too. Yeah, this is weird, too. It seems to follow a stream of light there. Um, you know, again, You'll get people that are either so indoctrinated that they want to debunk everything. Uh, it doesn't hinge on any one item. The fact is there's millions of items of information out there. And yeah, we, we do have uh, ghosts. You know, there are remnants of souls. There's impressions of energy um, that get imprinted into uh, the natural matrix. Uh, there are many different beings on different densities all around us all the time. If we could truly watch a, a movie of our own history, um, which, you know, it's been put out there that there are some benevolent uh, ET groups uh, that might just do that, literally cause there to be... Um, a holographic representation kind of like blue beam there showing us our true history here on planet earth and again earth was recreated from the destruction of tiamat which was destroyed by the dark system there's been an ongoing battle for millennia thousands and thousands of years perhaps you know millions hundreds of millions or even billions of years we don't know when it really started all we know is, you know, when 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 about we started, um, and what we've we, what we have gotten is that again, when you look to the cycles of the yugas as markers, um, we've we've been through three cycles, is what what the guides have given us three cycles of the yugas uh, since Earth was recreated from the wreckage of Tiamat. And Earth is in the process still of restabilizing. So yes, there was terraforming going on by ETs. This is the two creation stories in Genesis and, and it, it, that many people notice. There's a creation, then there seems to be uh, a destruction, and then there's a second creation. You know, as you see what appears to be a, a human going up into the light. Oh, don't go in the light, Carol Ann. That's that's another one. You know, I mean, I think there's just so many things out there that we haven't really been exposed to. But we've been exposed to a lot of uh, things that are later debunked. So when you do see things that are real, you just automatically think, oh, it's just CGI. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we were touching on that. It seemed like the David Icke's statement of, of don't go into the light because that's leading you back into the false matrix um, definitely riled up a lot of people. Um, again, feel into the energy. Feel into the energy. The frequencies say everything. The frequencies give you the, your information. 
Well, they do. You know, a lot of people that have had um, NDEs and who have been in front of source and they they feel that energy of love and love is far more than just an emotion. It, it's something that's very, very tangible. It's very palatable. It's it's what moves the earth. And so many people have gotten to experience that and each one having their own NDE or like really, truly out of body feeling that presence they know that there is something else running running this world and it the the thing the source of all is not a bad thing it's it's a beautiful thing and sometimes you it takes for you to pop out of the consciousness of the 3d to see a different picture absolutely you know lots of cases going on in latin america you know brazil Peru, etc. Here you have one. Now this this particular one is uh, another bizarre humanoid account from July 1996, seven months after the Varginha UFO incident in Brazil. This one was in Certesti, Romania. Eyewitness police officer Marian Mancu, volunteer guard Marce, uh, Maricel Russo, Time was 12.30 a.m. They were making their rounds. They heard a strange whine, felt a strong gust of air. Behind them was a craft hovering a half a meter above the road. It was dis discoidal with a diameter of five to six meters. Around it was a luminous belt with multicolored lights that were hypnotizing. No windows or doors were seen. Next to the craft were some little men. Uh, the humanoids, one meter or less in height, like a six-year-old child, eyewitnesses saw the creatures swirling around the ship and chattering in a language that sounded like falling rain. More on the little men, completely hairless, big heads, elongated towards the back, bumps on the crest, large ears but not pointed, Faces very white, eyes large, body covered in a gray scaly metallic suit which shone like fish scales. Some more, the creatures had large abdomens, arms extremely thin as thin as fingers. As the creatures moved, they seemed to float around the ship with its occupants. The craft then took off like a storm. Uh, is, isn't that curious? Yes, again, there's not just a few... Um, different species interacting here there are many that have been coming here and many of them are very very small groups um, that are not necessarily aligned with the draco reptilians nor are they aligned with the galactic federation they're just doing their own thing a lot of them well there are a lot of them there are a lot that you know even look like little grays but they're not just grays yeah, again, distinct. Even within the grays, there's many different groups. Um, some are not even biological at all, and others are biological or a mix of biological and, uh, again, technology. You know, here you see Roswell Daily uh, Record, you know, the whole thing in Roswell, the flying saucer. You know, it didn't all start there. No, you know, again, that's just one of the one of the things that uh, is just part of a list that's just too long to uh, to list uh here during world war ii february 25th 1942 the battle of los angeles um the <laughs> army says the, the alarm was real there was an air battle raging over los angeles and in effect you know they they thought was it the japanese was it the germans they saw UFOs, you know, UAPs. They were unidentified lights, and they just started shooting at them to no success, uh, perhaps because maybe they weren't really physical as well uh, as having technology beyond, way beyond ours. You know, there is the famous Nuremberg uh, sighting. There's, there's several, uh, quite a few, <laughs> very, very fascinating um events that are in our time annals that are just they just defy explanation other 
then hey these these are aliens and you know you you have the sky on fire you have ships being sighted again one that looks very much like what uh, George Lucas based Darth Vader's ship on. I mean, how how close can you? I wonder if this was the inspiration, honestly, and you know, or was it just simply a reptilian ship that they knew of? These air battles in the sky and people seeing again classic UFO shapes and other shapes as well that were just massively documented in in the history books. So, yeah, what did it really look like, that 1561 alien battle? You know, again, are they giving us good representations of what the people really, really saw? Or is the control system distorting things? Uh, as we know, the connection with the Nazis, which look to the, look to the, the German eagle. That sure looks like an Anunnaki eagle, a Sumerian eagle, or the, again, um, the same crest we see uh, being representative of Huramaza in, in the Zoroastrianism uh, tradition from Persia. You know, the saucer shape, they did. This is all declassified. Um, they did. And in fact, you know, again, um, the saucers over DC in that whole thing. Uh, there are those that say that was uh, literally the Nazis coming up to DC to say, you know, don't bother us, so to speak, or to show the technology that they had gotten from extraterrestrials. When we look at the stories, uh, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, and they talk about these massive um, battles, again, the Asuras and the Devas, uh, again, the Asuras are those service to self demonic type beings that come here and they clearly tell us in, in the Hindu scriptures, they take over a, a city, a town, a country, they take over an area, they set themselves up to be worshipped in the area, they demand uh, the first and the best of everything. Um, from females f to be their wives uh, to the best food and the gold and everything. You know, it, it couldn't be any clearer, really. And so when you really, really look, you wonder, hmm, we have these type of things being represented. Oh, there's a little, a little UFO up in the air, or is it just, you know, a parasol as he's flying by on the back of Garuda here? Or did it look a little bit more like this? What did it really look like? That's the question. And then there's this guy that really looks like he's going to fly. Yeah. Is this dance? What, what, yeah. Donner, Prancer, Prancer Vixen? Yeah. It's, it's one of them. It's not Rudolph. I don't see a shiny red nose. No, no, it's not. It's not Rudolph. It's not happy hour yet. And then you got this guy that really can fly. That guy is super cool. Oh, absolutely. And this is human potential. We, you know, we can fly. They've just convinced us that we can't. As always, guys, look forward to your comments. Make sure you are subscribed to all the channels. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.